Hello everyone and welcome to this module on introduction to continuum mechanics. So in this video we're going to discuss quite a few important uh, titles. We have the orthogonal tensor uh, where uh, we bring the concepts of an orthogonal tensor here and then we have the transformation matrix so uh, this is the transformation tensor but uh, we write it in the matrix form between two rectangular Cartesian coordinate system. And you have to keep in mind that here we're discussing the rectangular. So all the components are orthogonal to each other. X, Y, and Z, or E1, E2, and E3 components are uh, perpendicular or orthogonal to each other. So they all make this 90 degrees uh, angle with each other. Uh, and we have at last the transformation law for the condition components of a vector and a tensor. And this is quite uh, an important topic in uh, mechanics because for example, in courses like composites or uh, elasticity, some advanced courses, we have the concept of uh, you know a stress a stress tensor transformation. So you have to transform your stress tensor from one coordinate system to another, and basically this can be done uh, through these transformation laws. Or you have your uh, for example, your traction vector, and you want to transform it from one coordinate to another coordinate. So, uh, before getting into, uh, you know, the first topic, which is the orthogonal tensor, I would like to shed light on a topic that I discussed in, uh, uh, in previous, or let's say, in the earlier, uh, early part of the course, where I mentioned that, uh, uh, let's say, so, uh, just uh, a topic uh, from second session that I already mentioned, uh, I guess it was second session or maybe third. I don't know, but from earlier sessions, maybe it's better. So, but I said that uh, if you have a stress, uh, if you have a tensor like T as its component, and so I write it in additional notation. So we have EI dot T uh, EJ. And uh, you might uh, have some problem or difficulty in understanding or grasping why uh, we write this, uh, we use this kind of notation here. So uh, suppose that uh, if I have my, uh, you know, uh, if, if I have, for example, uh, T12, so I have E1, T, E2. And here uh, I want to write this. So uh, then I have uh, this T as T11, T12, T13, T21, T2, T23, T31, T32, and T33. And this is E2. So it is 0, it is 1, it is 0. And here I have E1, 0, 1, 0. Uh, so if I multiply this with this, uh, so this is 3 by, uh, so it is 1 by 3. So this is 3 by 3. So I get a 1 by 3 uh, matrix. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, a 1 by 3 matrix. So this is T1. This is T1, 2. And this is T1, 3. So times this zero one zero, so this becomes T one two. So that's why uh, we write uh, T I J T one two in the form of E one dot T E two. So it finally gives the components of T one two. So T I J is equal to E I dot T 
AJ. Okay, let's get it started by orthogonal tensor. Uh, so an orthogonal tensor basically is a kind of tensor that can transform a vector while preserving its length and angle. So an orthogonal tensor is a tensor which transform a vector while keeps its, uh, let's say, lens and angle, or while uh, preserves its better. Okay, and is a tensor or we might say it's a linear uh you know transformation so a tensor which transforms a vector so for example uh if you say uh uh if you have uh for example a tensor uh like uh, let's say something here so i denote this by q during the course so if you have a tensor like q and uh you multiply it by vector a so finally you preserve uh so it's in the same so if this is this vector a so you preserve its length as well as direction so if this is theta here and this is theta here so yeah uh, it, it acts on any vector like this so let's get into this a bit deeper so that means that if you have for example q a so q is a matrix which is the orthogonal matrix i denoted here in this course with q and also the book is this kind of notation so we have qa the magnitude of qa is the same as a and the magnitude of qb is also the same as b uh, and q is the orthogonal tensor a and b are both vectors and also so it keeps the lens so it preserve the length and also it preserves the angle Therefore, the cosine of A and B, so if you have two vectors like A and B, and they have an angle of theta, so it preserves the angle the same. So it is the same as the cosine of QA and QB. So it also preserves uh, length and preserves uh, the let's say angle so that's why when we write q a dot q b is equal to a dot b why because here we say q a the magnitude times q b times the cosine of q a and q b is equal to times a and uh, the magnitude of a times b times their cosine since these are equal and this is equal to this one this is equal to this one so we say that they're equal to each other all right so now uh, if you have q a dot q b you can write this as q b dot q a because uh the dot product is commutative and uh so based on uh you know uh our previous sessions we can write this as bq transpose so this becomes bq transpose qa and this is nothing but uh, and just I, I just made just draw a, 
uh, earlier, uh, you know, conclusion. So we have B Q transpose Q A, and this is of course equal to A dot B or B dot A. And uh, so when these two are equal to each other, we can draw this conclusion that Q transpose Q is equal to the identity matrix because we can put an I here. Maybe I write it with another color. So this is the I or the identity uh, tensor here. So we draw this conclusion here. Also, uh, we can uh, make another important conclusion. This one. Another uh, important conclusion is that Q, so it was that this Q, Q transpose is equal to Q transpose Q is equal to I. Another important property is Q inverse is equal to Q transpose. Uh, and you can also uh, just try to prove them. They're a part of the exercises at the end of uh, this section. Uh, so these are the, let's say the tensorial uh, form, but we can also write them in matrix form. So in tensorial notation, in tensorial form, we have this. So in the matrix form, if we write them, so this becomes Q transpose Q, Q, Q transpose is equal to Q transpose Q is equal to the identity matrix and also in no, initial notation so uh, we assert from here so uh, we said that uh, okay so we have uh, finally we have I which is Delta I J right so finally we have here I M for example Q M J Right, so this is Q, but this one is Q transpose. So you have to swap the, let's say, the subscripts. And here you have Q, I, M, Q, M, J. Here, this remains the same, but this one you have to transpose here. So this becomes M, I. Uh, next, we're going to Proof that uh, the determinant of an orthogonal tensor is either one or minus one. So to do so, we use this property. So uh, determinant of an orthogonal tensor. So uh, we already said that uh, the determinant can be written in the form of the sort of Q, Q transpose is equal to I. So if we apply the determinant here, so we have Q, Q transpose is equal to uh, the determinant of I, which is the same as Q uh the determinant of q and the determinant of q transpose is equal to uh here it is i which is one the determinant is one and we already said that uh this is uh the you know uh, this is an orthogonal tensor so the q and q transpose determinants are the same so this finally becomes Q uh, squared, determinant of Q squared is equal to one. Therefore, the determinant of Q is either one or minus one. So uh, if the determinant of Q is one, we call it a rotation. We call Q a rotation tensor so 
if the determinant of q is minus 1, would be called q and recollection tensor. So it means that if you have uh, a q, uh, or which is an orthogonal tensor, uh, so if you have it, uh, if the determinant is 1, we call it just a rotation uh, tensor. So it rotates, but it will keep the angle and the magnitude, the length, the same. Uh, but if it is uh, minus 1, it just reflects the tensor. For example, uh, it reflects from here to here or something like this. Uh, all right, so now let's get to another topic, uh, which is the transformation matrix. The transformation matrix between two rectangular Cartesian coordinates. So here, we already discussed the topic of having to having an orthogonal tensor, having an orthogonal coordinate system like here E1, E2, and E3, A3, where all the components are, uh, let's say, uh, perpendicular to each other. And uh, we're going to find the components uh, in the new matrix, in a new coordinate system, E prime 1, or the primed coordinate, E prime 2, and then E prime 3. So we call this coordinate as the unprimed, or the initial coordinate, and this is the primed, or uh, the secondary coordinate system. And we already mentioned uh, that uh, if you have uh, an E uh, prime I, the prime coordinate system. Uh, so if we use the transformation law we learned, it is Q E I. Uh, so it is e equal to Q M I E M. So we use an orthogonal tensor because we're not going to change the uh, the length and the angle. We're only going to change the coordinate system. Uh, so, okay. So, if we have, uh, for example, if we write Q11, uh, we already mentioned at the introductory part of the course that every single uh, uh you know tensor second order tensor can be written in this form so we write this as e1 dot q dot q e1 which is uh equal uh, so uh, which is equal to which is equal to so q e1 based on let's say one can be written as, uh, let's say, Q, E1, can be written as M1, E, M. And this is E1 dot Q, M1, E, M, which is equal to E1 dot Q11, E1 plus Q21, E2 plus Q31, E3. So this is uh, so we can take out uh, Q11 E1 dot E1 plus Q21 E1 E and sorry dot E2 plus Q31 E1 dot E3. And this is nothing but delta 1 1 delta 1 2 delta 1 3 this is delta 1 1 delta 1 2 and this is delta 1 3 uh, so d 
this is equal to zero, this is equal to zero, and this is one. So this is equal to Q11. So we can write it in this fashion. And basically we can write it as, so therefore, we can write Q11 as E1 Q, uh, therefore, we can write Q11 as E1 dot Q E1 is equal to, we said that this is E prime 1 from here. So this is um, E1 dot E prime 1. And basically, this means, which means the cosine angle between e1 and e prime 1 this is also the same for for example q13 here you say it is e1 q e3 so this is basically nothing but e prime 3 so this is e1 dot e prime 3 this is the cosine the cosine angle between uh, e1 and e prime 3. So basically, we see here that uh, the transformation and uh, the orthogonal transformation is nothing but the angle between uh, the initial coordinate system, like e1, and for example, uh, the e prime 1, and then with the e uh, e1 2 is nothing but uh, let's say sorry q12 is nothing but the angle between e1 and e prime 2 and q1 theory 3 is nothing but the angle between e1 and e prime 3 so if you write this in uh let's say uh the tensorial form so we have something like this uh, or i may bring this down a bit so uh this is the angle between e1 and e prime 1 e1 and e prime 2 e1 and e prime 3 e2 and e prime 1 e2 e prime 2 e to e prime 3 and e3 e prime 1 e3 e prime 2 e3 uh, e prime 3 and as we said we write them uh, in let's say in uh, the column 4 as we uh, made uh, an agreement on this so this is q11 this is q21 this is q31 this is Q12, this is Q22, this is Q32, uh, this is Q13, this is Q23, and this is Q33. All right. So, for example, if you have, uh, we, we already solved an example on this. But we're going to redo it here using the new strategy 2.16.1. This is the example 2.16.1. Uh, so we have, let's say, uh, E1, E2, the uh, unprimed coordinate. And then we have, e, we have E prime 1, and then we have, e prime 2 with the angle of theta here in theta here so uh, if you want to write and uh, we rotated everything uh, around uh, uh, e3 or the z-axis here so it is out of the screen uh, so q here in this case becomes the angle between e1 and e prime 1 is of course theta so it is the cosine theta so e1 and e prime 2 the angle is 9 uh, 90 uh, plus uh, let's say theta so it is the cosine uh, 90 
plus beta and then we have e prime three where uh, it is just out of the screen so the angle between e1 and e3 remains cosine 90 all right so we have e prime uh, sorry we have e2 here and e2 e prime one is nothing but the uh let's say uh this is theta so this is cosine half pi sorry i made a mistake here so this is these are half pi half pi minus theta this is the angle and here you have e2 e prime 2 which is uh, this theta here so it is cosine theta and e uh, e2 e prime 3 is uh, let's say cosine half pi and we have e3 which is orthogonal or to all these so it is cosine half pi this is cosine half pi and uh, so it has zero angle with itself so this reduces to so we have cosine theta here cosine half pi plus theta uh, it changes to sine and since we are in the second uh part of the uh you know the ray uh so we move in this direction and we are here in the second region second part and here cosine changes to sine and sine is positive here but cosine is negative so this becomes minus sine theta uh cosine half pi is zero and uh, cosine half pi minus theta is so cos uh, since we are in the first region so both sine uh, uh, co so it changes to sine but cosine is positive so uh, this becomes sine theta and cosine theta this is zero this is zero this is zero and cosine the zero is zero so this gives the same uh you know uh, results we had previously so next we have the topic of um, transformation law for uh, cartesian components of a vector and here i also bring you uh bring your attention to the cartesian components so we are talking about an orthogonal coordinate system all right we already mentioned that uh, if uh, you have ai if you want to extract any component of uh, the vector ai so uh, you have the dot product of the whole vector times the dot ei so you have a dot ei and in the transform you have a prime i is a prime dot uh, e prime i so uh and we also know that e prime i is nothing but q m i e m according to the transformation law so uh in order to write uh the trans uh the components of the transformation law for for the component uh for the cartesian component of uh, the vector a prime i so we have a prime i is equal to a prime dot uh so from here i call it two so from two we have uh we substitute e prime i so this becomes q m i e m uh, so you can take out this QMI here. So QMI goes here and you have A prime dot EM. And this is nothing but the component of, uh, let's say, uh, I guess that I made a mistake here. So uh, we have A prime, uh, we have AI is equal to A dot EI. And a prime i is the same vector because we only transformed it so there is no prime here so we have a prime i is equal to a dot e prime i and here again we have this a prime i is equal to a because we have the initial the original vector and we have uh we have used 
uh, transformation cube. It's an orthogonal transformation, so it does not affect the length uh, or the angle of A. It just transforms it from one coordinate to another coordinate. So uh, this is basically QMI A dot EM. Uh, so this becomes uh, basically AM, and this is equal to QMI AM. Therefore, finally, we get A prime I is equal to Q M I A M. And as you see here, we have the transposed form of uh, the tensor here. So this is the Q transpose. So in, this is the initial notation. So if you write it in matrix form, We have uh, A prime is equal to Q transpose because previously it was I M. So Q transpose A. And uh, if we write the components, uh, like, you know, uh, let's write it like A prime 1, A prime 2, A prime 3 is equal to q11 and instead of writing q12 because we are writing the q transpose we have q21 q31 we just swap the rows and the vectors uh, rows and columns q12 q22 and this is q32 q13 q23 and this is q33 times the vector a1, A2, and A3. And of course, if you have a component, uh, a matrix, uh, sorry, a vector uh, A, and you want to transform uh, A prime, and you want to transform it back to A, so you will have something like uh, AI is equal to Q, and here, you see, you have the tra uh, Q transpose A to transform A into A prime coordinate. Here, you have to use the Q. So you have Q I M A prime. Or in, in uh, matrix form, we have A is equal to Q A prime. All right. The next topic is the transformation law for the Cartesian component of a tensor. All right. So we already mentioned that if we have a tensor like Tij, uh, it has a component of, uh, so we can write it as Eitej. And we already mentioned the reason of kind of notation in the initial part of this uh, video. So if we transfer the component of Tij into the primed coordinate, so we have something like T prime Ij is equal to E prime I dot E T E prime J. And since we have, you know, this E prime I as, for example, Q, m i e m we can substitute this three here so uh, this becomes q m i e m dot t e j prime and again e uh, prime j can be written from here so uh, i write it here explicitly q n J E N because if I use M, so I'm gonna end up with four M here, 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 here as well, and this violates the 
uh, you know, the Einstein summation convention. So, and using four, I'm going to have Q, M, I, E, M, dot, T, Q, and J, E, N. And you can realize it here that I did not use Q, M, J, Q, M. All right. So I can take out Q, M, I, and Q, and J. So Q, M, I, Q, and J. And what I end up is E, M, dot, T, E, N. This is nothing but T, M, N. So this is Q, M, I, Q, and J, T, M, N. And if I sort this out, I can get something like Q, M, I, T, M, N, Q, and J. Uh, so overall, T prime I, J is equal to Q, M, I, T, M, N, Q, N, J. And I, if I write this in initial notation, I use this kind of writing, but this is written uh, as Q, M, I, Q, N, J, and T, M, N, because I wanted to use this kind of, you know, initial notation uh, to write uh, the tensorial form. So in tensorial form, this is initial notation. In D notation and in tensor form we're gonna have T prime is equal to so this is Q I M at first so this is Q transpose this is T M N and this is N J this is Q so it was previously Q I M T, M, N, Q, N, J, which actually gives T, I, J. So we remove, we get rid of these dummy indices, so we end up with T, I, J here. But this is shifted to Q, M, I, so this is Q transpose. And you can simply write the transformation law from the prime to the unprime. So it becomes uh, T is equal to Q, T, Q, transpose. Oh, sorry, Q, transpose. And uh, the same reason from here applies to here, from the vector. Uh, applies here. So if we write this in the initial notation, this becomes uh, T I J is equal to this time this is Q I M. Then we have T M N. Then we have Q instead of N J. So we have to write J N because we have the transpose or this is equal to Q, I, M, Q, N, J, T, M, N. And you might notice that in some of the books, uh, based on, you know, based on the definition of uh, this and this, you might see that uh, T prime is equal to Q, T, Q transpose. And this is, of course, Q transpose from T to T prime, sorry, from T, to, uh, from T prime to T, this is Q transpose T prime uh, Q. So it depends on, uh, you know, the notation uh, used in the book. So here we use this kind of notation here. Uh, and we follow it all through the book. Uh, so it depends on how you uh, first write and uh, your your transformation, and uh, you, therefore uh, then you need to stick to that rule and continue uh, your uh, and keep on your uh, let's say calculation. Uh, all right. Uh, there's also another important uh, you know uh, 
uh, topic here at the end of this section in the book. So the book says that you have to uh, make a difference between these two. So you should differentiate between t prime is equal to q transpose t q and t prime is equal to q transpose t q and of course these are two different kind of notation this one is the uh, tensorial notation or the tensorial form and this one is the matrix form uh, we use I call the first one so uh, we use the first form uh, to calculate the components of T, the tensor T, and the transform coordinate T prime. We use one to calculate. So maybe it's a good idea to just draw these. All right, so this is the form one, this is the form two. The first form is the matrix form, while the second one is the tensorial form. The first one is used to calculate components or T components in the prime the prime coordinate system coordinate system while the first uh, while the second one is just the multiplication of three tensors so you have to differentiate between these uh, two they're quite different uh, and here we have uh, an example which I would like to you know uh, solve so we have the example 2.181 and 2.183 this is quite these are quite important especially this one so uh it says that um so 2.181 uh says that you have t a tensor of 0 1 0 one two zero 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 one and it says that uh, you want to transfer this tensor using an orthogonal uh, transformation you're going to transfer this sorry to a prime coordinate which is rotated around e3 axis or the z axis uh, through 90 degrees so it is something like uh, you have e1 and e2 here and e3 is out of screen and uh, this is rotated 90 degrees so this becomes e prime 1 and this is e prime 2 and again e prime 3 coincides e prime uh, e3 and it's out of the screen therefore our transformation uh, is q this is the cosine of uh, E1, E2, and E3, E prime 1, E prime 2, E prime 3. 
So this is cosine theta, e1 and e2, e prime 1 is cosine half pi, so and e prime 1 with a prime 2 is cosine pi. Uh, then we have e1 and e prime 3, which is cosine half pi. And we have e2 with e1, it is again cosine. Uh, so it is e2 with e prime 1, it is cosine 0. E2 with E prime 2, it is cosine half pi. And E2 with E prime 3 is cosine half pi. So these are all 90. E3 with E prime 1 is, of course, cosine half pi. With E prime 2, it is cosine half pi. And E3 with E prime 3, it is cosine 0. So finally, what we get is uh, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and 1. So if you want to know the components of T prime, we have Q transpose T Q. So if you write the Q transpose, 0, 1, 0 minus one zero 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 one i just uh swap uh the rows and the vectors so i write this here this column as a row here and this column as a row here then i have my t zero one zero zero two zero 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 one and i have my q Again. So you first multiply these two together. So this becomes zero, zero. So this is zero. And this is zero. This is two. So this is zero, zero, and this is zero. This is zero. This is minus 1, this is 0, this is 0, this, this goes 0, this is 1. So now we multiply these two. So finally it becomes uh, 0, so this is 2. Uh, this is 0. I guess that I made a mistake here. So this is one. So this is zero, this is one. All right, so this becomes zero. And this is minus one. So this with this is zero. This with this is minus one. This with this is zero, and this with this is also zero, and this with this is also zero. This with this is also zero, and this with this is one. Nice. So you have all the components in the transform uh, coordinate. And let's suppose that uh, you want, for example, a spatial or um, a special, let's say, uh, components of the primed tensor. So the core, the transform coordinate, you want the component in the transform coordinate. Uh, so for example, you want to take out uh, the prime one, two. And this is a part of the, uh, you know, the example 218.3. All right. So, uh, we know that, uh, so according to the equation, 2, 18, 9, it is written that uh, the t prime i j can be written as e 
uh, in the tensorial notation, of course. So EI prime transpose, T, uh, sorry, in the matrix form, E prime I transpose T, E prime J. And if you have, for example, T prime 1, 2, we can write it as E prime 1 dot T, E prime 2. This is what we already mentioned here in the beginning of this section here. So this is T prime I, J is equal to E prime I dot T, E prime J. Uh, so we only need to calculate uh, this, let's say, E prime I and E prime 2. So first we go with E prime 1. So E prime 1 is basically Q E 1. We already mentioned this here. E prime 1 is, uh, you know, it is Q E I. So which is equal to this. All right, so maybe it's a good idea to write right here. So you know what to follow. So this becomes uh, QJI uh, EJ. Oh, sorry, QJ1. Okay, EJ. So this is Q11 E1 plus Q, uh, let's say, uh, 2, 1 E2 plus Q3, 1 E3. And if we bring uh, Q from here, um, so let me just copy this. Right. So Q is equal to Q is equal to this, therefore, uh, so from, let's call this 5, so from 5, Q11 is 0, so this becomes 0, plus Q21 uh, is 1, so it is E2, plus uh, Q3, 1 is 0, so this is basically E2, so we're right, uh, E prime 1 is E2 dot, uh, T, and we need to calculate E prime 2, so E prime 2 is uh, Q E2, which is Q J2 E J, which is equal to Q12 E1 plus Q22 E2 plus Q32 E3. So uh, again from 5, we have Q1, 2 is minus 1, so it is minus E1 plus Q22 is 0, plus Q32 is also 0, so this is minus E1. So uh, let's call this 6, and this is 7. So from 6 and 7. So E prime 2 becomes minus E, uh, E1. So this is minus E1, uh, sorry, E2 dot T, E1, which is minus T2, 1. So if we go here, T1, uh, T, sorry, T2, 1, T2, 1 is 1, which is minus 1. So T prime 1, 2 becomes minus 1.